Zadrizes bus darīs, kas tev. In this video, I want to discuss some House of the Dragon Season 2 news. We got some leaks, a casting, uh, and then also some information about some sets being built. Before I jump into that, please do me a massive favor. Only if you enjoy this video, go ahead and subscribe. That's one of the best things you can do for anybody you're a fan of here on YouTube. If you can't do anything else, please just subscribe. Go ahead and pull that trigger. And also, slap like on this video. Like goes going to be 420. <laughs> I don't not. Okay, so first things first, Amanda Collins who played mother in one of my most favorite series season one anyway of all time raised by wolves fortunately it was canceled came out by hbo like shortly after game of thrones i thought it was going to be as big as game of thrones it had a lot of potential it was it was a really good show but the main character of that show amanda collin the actress who played mother has officially been cast in house of the dragon as lady jane aaron now for your uh, unaware, Lady Jane Aaron is a direct relative to Emma Aaron, aka Rhaenyra, right? Emma Aaron is Rhaenyra's mother, and Emma Aaron herself was half Aaron, and she was also the granddaughter of the old king, Jaehaerys. Remember that guy we saw in the opening scene of House of the Dragon season one? I'm just going to get this out of the way. Amanda Collin is the perfect casting for this character. Like, you could get someone who looks a little bit more like. Uh, the actress who played Emma Aaron, Cyan Brooke, gorgeous in real life, right? But that's besides the point. The embodiment of the role. Someone's supposed to be... She's called the Defender of the Veil, right? Th this character, Lady Jane Aaron, in the books, rules the Veil from a very young age, right? But she rules through three reigns. Technically four if you want to get super technical, right? She's already the protector of the Veil, right? In 94 AC when Jaehaerys, the old king, is still in power. Then she continues that hold over the veil into Viserys' reign. And then also, she's still reigning ruler of the veil by the time Rhaenyra comes into her power and Aegon II is into his power. So she's the protector of the veil for all those reigns. Uh, she dies a few years later, 134 AC, but she completely makes it through all the events of the dance. Some of the most significant things, or let me say this, the, the scene, or a couple of scenes we're going to see her in this season will likely involve... Uh, well, <laughs> to, to be safe, what happens in the books, <laughs> right? So initially, when Jace is sent from Dragonstone, the first place he goes to is the Vale. Rhaenyra mentions how, you know, the, her mother is an Aaron, she's an Aaron, and they'll most likely support her. So when he gets there, two different things potentially happened, right? So Mushroom, who is the most fun version, <laughs> he says that Lady Jane Aaron will only pledge their fealty and support the Blacks in the Dance of the Dragons if Jaceris can make her come. <laughs> I'm down, sign me up, uh, but that's Mushroom's version. What most likely happened, right, is that Emma, or sorry, Jane explained to Jaceris that if I do support you, the other side, the Greens, will come attack me from the sky, right? Just like how Jaceris lands Vermax in the yard inside the Eyrie, right, which kind of renders the veil useless, all of its defenses, the fact that it's built up on top of a mountain and into a mountain, right? It doesn't really matter if you have a dragon, you can just fly up there, right? So she, what most likely happens is that she tells uh, Jaceris she'll pledge her fealty to him if they can get dragon riders. So that's what Jaceris does. He promises them dragon riders. He ends up sending his little brother Joffrey, right? And also... Reyna. Reyna, uh, in the books, gets betrothed to Joffrey after Lucerys dies. And uh, Reyna brings three dragon eggs with her. And this is really cool because one of them hatches. Her own dragon egg, Morning, hatches. The other dragon, Taraxes, that's already, like, kind of already hatched, right? Taraxes is barely big enough for Joffrey himself to ride. So even though they said they're sending, uh, you know, Lady Jane Aaron of the Vale dragon riders, it's kind of, like, back back ass words a bit because one of them is a, is a baby hatchling it's an egg when it gets there and the other one is just barely big enough really the only reason why Jaceris did this right why Rhaenyra did this is to protect Joffrey they wanted to send him to the Vale in order for him to no longer be uh in the way of the war so to speak but it's really cute Joffrey's like a mad pit bull and he's like I want to fly my dragon to Rexies. I want to go fight but uh Jaceris has to convince him like no dude we need you in the Vale like you're you are protecting the Vale from the greens if they were to attack now, what's interesting is that he doesn't stay up there the whole story. Once Rhaenyra takes King's Landing, she figures it's safe enough to get her sons, right, back from the Vale. So, Joffrey ends up going back 
to King's Landing, and this is where he dies. Like, when the when the storming of the Dragon Pit breaks out and all the dragons start dying, Joffrey hops on Cyrax in order to go and try to save his dragon. Cyrax drops <laughs> Joffrey, and he dies in Flea Bottom. It's not funny, but it's like, it's, 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 uh, it's kind of interesting, because if Rhaenyra had just listened to a lot of her supporters, it was like, after she takes King's Landing, King's Landing falls again, right? And she's kind of told to go to the Vale, and instead she goes to Dragonstone, where she's obviously eaten by Sunfire, but if she'd gone to the Vale, she likely would have lived. She likely would have outlived long enough for Aegon the Second to be taken care of, and maybe would have sat the Iron Throne in the Indian and had a legitimate reign, right? Because you gotta realize that in the, in the novels, even her sons and grandsons don't acknowledge her own reign as being legitimate, right? So, it's kind of interesting, the way the, the, the story goes, is that if she, instead of going to Dragonstone, right, Instead, if she goes to the Vale, she would be safer, but she goes to Dragonstone because she feels like it's kind of like, it's almost like a pride thing, right? But she definitely would have been far safer in the Vale, but she doesn't, right? And uh, one of the things that uh, Jane Aaron does is rally a bunch of, I think she has like 1,500 knights and 8,000 um, know, foot soldiers that she is getting ready to send to King's Landing to defend Rhaenyra's claim, right? But they, they can't get there. The last stop, uh, they need ships to take them, and Rainier doesn't have enough money to pay for the ships to bring that army down, so instead she retreats to Dragonstone. Like I said, she's ultimately eaten, eaten by Sunfire. Alright, so let's get into the leaks. Now, uh, like I mentioned, Amanda Collins is going to be playing Jane Eyre, and that is a casting leak because it was not officially announced by HBO. Like, HBO officially announced some characters a month or two ago, along with, the, like, um, with some of those characters was Alice Rivers, right? Obviously, that's a massive one. And then um, we also had Alan Oakenfist. He's going to be playing Abu Bakr Salim. And Amanda Collin and Abu Bakr are, uh, Abu Bakar are from Raised by Wolves. So that's cool that we're going to get to see them in House of the Dragon. And both of them are going to survive the entirety of the dance. So that's even cooler, right? Um, uh, but some of the other leaks, right, were that they're going to be filming uh, for the last two weeks in August, they're prepping right now, they're gonna be filming in this place called Bourne Woods, uh, in, uh, Bourne Wood upon Surrey, or something like that, like, England has crazy name, but it's Bourne Wood, they're gonna be filming there from, uh, August 15th to August 31st, and it's going to be a pretty serious production. I, uh, was sent leaked information, um, a couple of weeks ago that said that they, we're going to be filming until like pretty much the end of August, early September. Uh, there were some fan accounts that circulated the rumor that filming on location filming was done and the rest of it's going to be filmed in the studio at least. And that's not true. They confirmed that now because we know that they blocked off this Bourne Woods area for two weeks next month. All right. So that's really exciting. What's being filmed here is Rook's Rest. We haven't seen anything aside from Aegon's forces arriving to the battle being filmed. Right. So that's where Aegon's troops are marching out. Uh, we, we haven't had anybody massively lit on fire. We did have some of those scenes where we had burnt horses and stuff, but that's not the battle of Rook's Rest. Rook's Rest has two dragons. There's probably going to be more people lit on fire than have ever been lit on fire before. And this two weeks to film it is literally, in my opinion, that's what they're filming. It's going to be the battle for Rook's Rest. And if you're unaware, in short, Rook's Rest is like one of the first big, big, uh, battles in the dance, right? So, um, Rook's Rest is right near King's Landing in the Crown Lands, and they are attacked by the Greens. The Greens start burning their uh, their trains of like um, supplies and stuff. So they send out a claw to Rhaenyra. Rhaenyra in the books is distraught. Uh, so Jaceris and Corlys and Rhaenys are kind of running her council, right? So Rhaenys volunteers to go to Rook's Rest. She gets there. And guess what? It's a trap, right? She initially thinks that it's just one green, one dragon, but really, it's freaking Vagar and Aemon, right? And Aegon and Sunfire, and they are the ones causing the problems at Rook's Rest. So she, instead of fleeing, which she totally could have left Rook's Rest to go back to Dragonstone, right? Because it's not a fair fight. Instead of doing that, she says, nah, I got this, right? So she cracks her whip. So we haven't seen Targaryens using whips on the show. I don't think they're going to, although it would be pretty BA if they did. I think, actually, I remember Eve Best mentioning how she's learning how to use a whip. She's literally learning how to use a whip, I think. Um, and that was really early on in season two filming. Uh, 
Or maybe in one of the interviews she mentions how one of her props is a whip and she it just didn't make it into the show in season one and it will be in season two. But anyway, she's at Rook's Rest. She gives a, a, a glad cry, like a war cry, like, <laughs> think of Xena, uh, like a Xena-esque cry, right? And then she slaps her whip and then melees and her right into battle, right? She's actually doing really well. Sunfire severely damaged. Melee's is whooping up on her, right? Uh, on Sunfire, right? Nearly rips one of his wings completely off, and he's unable to fly after the battle. Uh, scratches his belly open, right? He's forced to just... After the battle's done, Sunfire is so badly damaged it can't fly and has to feast on corpses of the dead on the battleground, right? So, uh, like I said, initially the battle's going well. Rainies and Melee's are getting the upper hand. Sunfire is losing, right? And then, bam, out of nowhere... Uh, Vagar and Amond descend from up in the air and crash into them and send them hurtling towards the earth, right? Um, and when they crash into the ground, uh, Melee's dies, right? Um, uh, some rumors that I was sent, some leaks that I was sent, says Rainey's in the books initially dies. Her corpse is found charred next to her dragon, although it's completely unrecognizable because of how badly burned it is. But that that's where Rainey's dies. So some of the leaks that were sent was that instead of Rainey's dying on impact, she actually survives a little bit and starts trying to crawl away from the battle, but then Sunfire eats her, right? So um, that's what happens at Rook's Rest. That's probably what they're going to be filming in the next two weeks. We'll know as soon as they start because it's on location. So somebody with a really long lens is going to be taking pictures. And the last little bit of leaks I want to talk about for this video are the images of the sets that are being built outside of Leaves Den. Um, I've been sent rumors that some of these uh, sets that are being built are going to be for Heron Hall. Some of them are going to be for interior shots of the Vale and... Um, We've obviously seen it before in Game of Thrones, so uh, we'll know once they finish building the sets, we'll know for sure what they are. Uh, but this seems like a good point to wrap this video up. Um, if you enjoyed it, please slap a like on it. The like hole is going to be 420, and then also subscribe. It's one of the best things you could ever do for anybody here on YouTube, so please subscribe if you're a fan of mine. Um, also, super special shout out to Tyler Schnabel, The North Must Remember, Brian Johnson, and Destiny Mix Queen Phillips 420. They are all executive producers of this video over on my Patreon, patreon.com slash our hunts reviews. Uh, I recently just uploaded an hour long panel that I did on Zoom with uh, some of my patron members over there, and we kind of all just hung out and uh, chatted a song of ice and fire that's up on my patron uh you can go watch it right now if you want to join but well, thank you for watching this